Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're looking at our top tips for simulating Daz 3D clothing in Cinema 4D with the new Cloth Dynamics tools in version 2023 and above. This tutorial was brought to you by our brand new course, Character Creation in Cinema 4D and Daz Studio, where we show you how to design and create stunning photorealistic characters and incorporate them into your Cinema 4D workflow. In the course, we start by introducing you to Daz Studio, the free software that will literally allow you to create amazing characters in just minutes. We explore the Daz marketplace, see where we can source free models, design and shape our characters, create clothing and accessories, hair, materials, posing, and even animation, in the most comprehensive training for Daz Studio out there. Then we show you our exact step-by-step -step workflow for getting your Daz models into Cinema 4D, including mesh correction, material conversion, troubleshooting, and lighting and rendering in Redshift. Then in the course project, we'll create a classic portrait style render together and walk you through the whole Daz to Cinema 4D process from start to finish, so you can do the same with your own creations. By the end of the course, you'll be able to create stunning characters quickly in Daz Studio and incorporate them seamlessly into your Cinema 4D projects as well as learning loads of tips and tricks in Daz, Cinema 4D, and Redshift along the way. There's a link below if you'd like to check that out. Otherwise, let's get started with the tutorial. So here we are in Daz Studio, and I've got a simple dancing character in our scene. And if we wanted to improve the look of our clothing, we can actually do a cloth simulation directly within Daz by using the built-in DeForce engine, which is a bit of a simplified version of the cloth engine in Cinema 4D. And you can see there's a lot of the same settings in here. So let's fire off a simulation, which unfortunately can be kind of slow in Daz. So I'll just speed the video up a bit. And that actually took three and a half minutes to fully sim on my fairly beasty computer. But if we play this, it can give us a fairly decent looking cloth sim. However, if we export this out to Cinema 4D, the character comes in fine and the animation but we've now completely lost that cloth sim. And while there doesn't currently seem to be a way of exporting DeForce simulations out of Daz, we can now simulate clothing right here in Cinema 4D, where we'll actually get much faster and much better results with the new cloth tools available in version 2023 and above. So let's start off by seeing how we go about simulating our character's skirt. So let's grab the skirt object over here and hit Shift C to bring up our command window where we'll start typing cloth and grab a cloth tag. And we want the PBD simulations cloth tag, not the old one here. So we'll apply that, which gives us a tag here and a bunch of settings down here. So let's see what this gives us straight off the bat. And we just have gravity pulling the skirt straight down through our character. So our first step will be making it interact with the character. So we'll grab our character mesh, which I think is this one and shift C again. On here, we'll add a collider tag. And again, we want the PBD version, which is represented by this little coat hanger icon. And now if we hit play, it's intersecting with our character, but it's also sliding down. So we need to find a way to keep it in place around her waist. And there's a few ways we could do that. One way would be to grab the cloth tag and just tweak some of these settings down here. So we could try increasing the friction way up to something like a thousand and that should stop it sliding down like so. So that's one option. We could also undo that and try the new stickiness value and we'll try 1000 for that as well. And that doesn't actually seem to be very sticky at all. And that's because for the stickiness to work, we also need some stickiness on the collision object. So let's grab the tag on our character and we'll bring the stick value all the way up to one. And we'll play that. And it's definitely sticking now, possibly a bit too tightly. So we probably just need to decrease those values to make that work a bit better. But I'll just set the stickiness on both of these back to zero. And another way we can do this without tweaking any of these settings, which is probably even easier, is to just hit Control D on the keyboard to bring up the project settings. Then over in the simulation tab, we've got our global controls for the new cloth and soft body system, which also now allows us to choose whether we want to use the GPU or CPU to do our simulations. It's set to GPU by default, which if you have a decent graphics card is going to simulate super fast like so. But you can also switch it to CPU, which in my case is going to be a lot slower. 
with speeds pretty similar to the DeForce engine in DAS, which also runs on the CPU. So I'll leave that on GPU. Then we've also got the gravity and scene scale settings down here. But the most important bit is here under simulation where we've got the sub steps, which is basically the accuracy of our simulation. At a value of 20, it does simulate nice and fast, but it's not super accurate, which is probably why the clothes are slipping off. But if we double this to 40, it should increase the accuracy and behave a bit more realistically. And that's definitely staying in place a bit better now. Let's try doubling this again to 80, which should be even more accurate, but will simulate a bit slower. But we do have a pretty good simulation now, so we could just leave it there, but let's take a quick look at these other settings. The iterations and smoothing iterations are for smoothing out the simulation if you're getting any jittering. Ours seems to be looking pretty smooth already, so I probably wouldn't bother adding any iterations. But if we were to increase these, it does tend to slow things down quite a bit. And it can also make the cloth look a little bit stiffer, which is probably not what we want for a skirt. So best to only increase this if your cloth is behaving strangely. So let's remove that. And then we've got damping, which allows us to slow down the motion of the cloth, which is probably easier to visualize if we crank this right up and take a look. And you can see the cloth starts to look like it's floating or like it's underwater, or maybe made from a super light material, which is quite cool. But you probably won't need to increase this all that often. And we can also clamp the velocity and acceleration to stop things moving too fast as well. And we can also improve the collision accuracy if we notice the cloth is poking through our collision mesh or just not colliding properly. But our collisions are looking pretty good, so I probably wouldn't bother adjusting that either in this case. So let's just increase the overall accuracy again by setting our sub steps to 80. And I think we can call this simulation done. So let's lock it in by caching our cloth. So I'll grab our cloth tag and under cache, let's cache the scene. And now we should be able to play this back in real time. And I think our cloth is looking pretty good. Although it does look like that bit around her waist is bouncing up and down. So let's take a quick look at how we can pin that into place. So let's first clear the cache again so we can re-simulate this. And this time, rather than relying on the sub steps to keep our clothing in place, we can also use a belt to attach it to her body. So I'll drop this back down to 20, which will also speed up our simulation. Then we'll grab the skirt, and this time we'll use a belt tag. And we want the PBD version of that as well. And if we take a look down here, it's asking for something to belt our skirt onto which in our case is going to be our character. So we need to grab our character mesh and drag that into here. And at this point, it shouldn't have any effect yet. And the skirt just slips straight down off her again, because we also need to select some points on our skirt mesh, which we want to be affected by the belt. And we need to set that over here. So with the skirt selected, we'll switch to edge selection mode, which has strangely made the skirt move up here, but we'll address that in just a second. I want to be able to access the edges at the top of the skirt, which is a bit hard to get to at the moment. So we might just switch to solo mode for a second to isolate the skirt. And now we can zoom in here without the rest of the character getting in the way. And we're going to use our belt as if there was elastic all around the edge holding our skirt up. So we want to select all of those edges at the top here. So if we double click on one of these edges, it automatically selects the whole edge loop. So let's do the same again for all these loops at the top. So basically selecting the part of the skirt where the elastic might be. And now to use this as our belt points, we can't actually use an edge selection. We need to convert our edges to points. And we can do that easily by just holding control and switching to points mode. And now we've got points selected instead. So we'll disable solo mode again. And we're going to pin these points to her body with the belt tag. But you might notice these points are currently up under her armpit and not down on her waist because the skirt moved when we switched to edge mode before. And this is a problem you're probably going to run into when working with animated characters from Daz. 
So let's just see what happens if we set these points now in the belt tag. So we'll hit set and straight away, you'll see what I mean. If we just click away now, the skirt snaps back into the correct position, but the belt constraints are still way up here around her chest instead. So if we play this back, it's now attached to her body, just in the wrong position. And that's because if we try to edit any part of a rig DAS mesh, it's always going to pop back into the original A pose, which is why the dress moved when we switched to edge mode before. So for this to work correctly, we'll need to do our belting on the A pose as well and not on the animated mesh. So to do that, we just need to clear the point selection from the belt tag again. And if we take a look at our imported DAS character here, each mesh has one of these weight tags applied to it. And if we were to grab each one of these, we can adjust the weight down here, which if we set back to zero, will revert everything back to the initial A pose, which basically just turns the animation off completely. So now if we grab our skirt again, we've still got those points selected, but they're now exactly where they need to be right here on her waist, because the whole character is back in the default position. So now we can grab our belt tag and set these points. Then we need to reactivate our animation by grabbing all our weight tags again and bringing them all back up to 100% influence. And now if we click away, those points stay exactly where they need to be. And if we hit play now, we've successfully belted our dress onto our character's waist and we no longer have any slipping. So for most clothing sims, this is probably going to be all you need, but let's take a look at a few other things we can do. In this scene, we've got a pretty similar setup, only this time we've also got a floor plane, which I've made a collider as well. And our animation actually starts from the A pose. So let's take a look at that. And we transition from the A pose into a walking animation. And the dress basically just falls straight off like so. But rather than applying cloth dynamics to the whole dress this time, we really only need to sim the lower part of the dress because the top part is skin tight, so it'd be better to just keep that all in place as it is. So let's take a look at another trick we can do with the belt tag. So we'll grab our gown here and add another belt tag. And again, we need our gown to be belted onto our character. So let's drag the character mesh into here. And this time for our point selection, let's switch to point mode. And we'll hit control A to select all of the points on the gown and we'll set that. And it'll take a little while for that to happen because the dress is a fairly dense mesh. And now every point has turned yellow, indicating that they've been constrained to our character. But this time we're going to isolate the selection with a map, which we're going to plug into the belt influence down here. So we can actually just paint in the area of the dress we want to be affected by the simulation. So again, with our gown selected, let's do a search for the paint tool. And these bright yellow points are going to be a bit distracting while we paint on here. So let's go to filter and switch to geometry only mode. Then we'll click away from the belt tag and switch to object mode. And now if we grab our gown geometry again, we can start painting a vertex map directly onto here. We just need to make sure that we're painting on both sides of our model though. So if we hit spacebar a few times, we can bring back our paint tool settings and we'll hit control Z to undo the painting. And this time we'll uncheck visible only, which limits our painting to only the visible area. But painting on here now should go straight through to the other side. So let's just paint in the area where we want to run our simulation on, which is going to be the bottom half of the gown. And we can increase the size of the brush as well to do this a bit faster. And we'll just check we've got the whole thing. Looks like we missed a bit here. Then I might just smooth this harsh edge out here so there's a bit of a softer transition by setting the mode to smooth and increasing the smooth effect to 100. We can apply that to our map and we've now got a nice smooth gradient between the belted area and the unbelted area. So if we grab our belt tag again, we can take our newly created vertex map here and drag that into the belt influence map slot here. And we'll see what that gives us. And it's looking a bit funny because we might actually have our vertex map around the wrong way, which would be why the dynamics are affecting the top part and not the bottom. But that's easily fixed. We just need to go back to our vertex map and invert this, which switches the painted area of our map around. So let's click off that 
and play the animation again. And we've now limited the cloth simulation to just the lower part of the dress. And it's probably simming a lot faster as well now. So that's how you can belt clothing using a map. Let's take a look at one more example. And we've got the same setup again with a different item of clothing here. But if we play this, it's very slow to sim and the cloth is super stretchy, despite the fact that our sub steps value is set pretty high at 60, which usually helps firm up the cloth. But as you can see, this is just slipping straight off again. And that's because if we switch to lines mode, you can see that this particular item of clothing from the Daz store is much more dense than usual. And there's literally tens of thousands of polygons in this mesh. So not only is it going to sim much slower, but with all that extra geometry, the points are closer together. So there's more chance of bending and folding. So we end up with a very stretchy cloth, which is going to require much higher sub step and iteration values to firm up, which would be extremely slow to simulate. But a better option here would be to run a remesh to just reduce the amount of polygons and then run a simulation on a much lighter mesh, which would be a lot faster and allow us to firm up the cloth a bit easier. So let's grab our Daz clothing, which is called suit here. And when we import this from Daz Studio, we also get this skin object attached, which is just applying the exported animation to the clothing. But because we're going to simulate this separately, we don't actually need that. So to keep things nice and clean, I like to right click on here and hit current state to object, which gives us a separate unanimated mesh in its current state. So we'll just pull that out of there and get rid of the old rigged version. And our duplicate has a copy of the cloth tag on it as well. So if we play this, we should get the exact same thing where it falls straight down off our character. But now if we grab the high resolution suit geometry, we can add in a remesh to reduce those polygons. And if we hold Alt when we bring that in, it should automatically be applied as a parent of our mesh. And you'll notice we've lost our texture map on here now, but we'll sort that out a little bit later. Let's take a look at the settings here in the remesh. It's currently set to use the Z remesher algorithm, which is definitely the best one, but the mesh density is set to 100%, meaning we still have the exact same amount of polygons we started with. But if we bring this down to 50%, we can see that's going through the remeshing process down here. And when that's done calculating, we've now halved the amount of polygons in our mesh. So if we were to move our cloth simulation tag onto the remeshed version instead, we can now run that on our lighter mesh, which should in theory simulate a bit faster and be a bit less stretchy and stay on our character a bit better, like so. And we could probably lower the mesh density even further in our remesh. So let's try dropping this down to 10% of the original poly count. And again, we can see that calculating down here. And now we've got an even lighter mesh to simulate. And if we play this, we're going to get a much faster and much less bendy simulation, which is looking pretty good. So now that we're happy with that, let's cache the animation. And we should be able to play this through in real time now. And scrub through the timeline if we need to. So we've got a pretty decent cloth simulation now, but the problem is we've now lost our texture map. And we can see if we disable the remesh for a second to reveal our original high resolution suit with the materials applied to it, the texture map is all looking good. But if we re-enable this, it reverts back to gray. And if we try moving the materials onto here, it's not going to work for us. So let's undo that. And I'll show you a little workaround where we can actually use our low resolution remesh geometry to drive our high resolution mesh, which will allow us to keep our textures and materials intact. So we'll start by grabbing our original high res suit and holding control, drag out a copy of that. And we'll rename this to suit HD so we don't get confused. So now if we hide this, we've got our low res remeshed version and our high res textured version as separate objects. And to drive the high res with the low res, we need to bake the animation to keyframes. So we'll right click on the low res remeshed version and we'll connect objects and delete that, which turns our remesh into a single piece of geometry. And we don't need the materials on there, so let's remove those. So now we're going to take our simulation and bake that animation into our new low res mesh. So let's go back to the start of the timeline 
and we'll right click on the remesh suit and show F curves. Then in our curve editor, we'll go to functions and choose bake objects, which will transfer our simulated animation to the mesh itself. So let's run that. And we wanna bake the mesh points only. So let's disable all of these except PLA, which stands for point level animation. And we'll make sure we're baking the full timeline and hit okay. And we'll just let it do its thing. And now we can close this panel and you can see that's now created a new mesh for us with the simulated animation baked directly into it. So at this point, we could even delete the remeshed version with the cloth tag, and we should now be able to play this back with only the baked animation, which is looking good. And again, it should play back in real time and allow us to scrub the timeline like so. So now we can use this, which is still the low res version, to drive the high res textured version which is back at the starting position because we don't have animation applied to that yet. So let's grab our high res mesh and under deformers, let's add a mesh deformer to that by holding shift and clicking that to bring it in as a child. And the mesh deformer is asking for a cage, which basically means which low res geometry cage is going to drive this. In our case, that's going to be our remesh geometry, which now has the animation baked into it. So I'll drag that into here. Then down here under advanced, let's set this to 100% accuracy. And we also wanted to form this by surface area. Then at the start of the animation, we'll initialize the deformer. And that now added a display tag to our low res mesh and hid its visibility. So we only now see our high res suit with the texture pattern on it. And if we now play this, and maybe just switch back to shaded view. The original high resolution clothing is now inheriting the animation from the baked low resolution mesh. And it's looking pretty good. So one final little tip before we wrap this one up. If you wanna fix little areas like this where objects are poking through your clothes, the best way is always going to be setting up your collision objects and collision passes correctly and possibly increasing your sub steps and iterations to get a more accurate sim. But if you just have a few of these little areas that need tweaking like this, I've got a little hack you can use to save re-simming all over again. If we grab the low res mesh, which has our baked animation, we can use another deformer. This time we want the correction deformer. And with that selected, we can hover over the part of our mesh we need to correct and we'll hit shift C again and look for one of the sculpting brushes. Let's go with the inflate brush and just lower the brush size a bit. And with the correction still selected, we can just start inflating that out a bit. So it's no longer intersecting with that shoe like so. And because we've done that to our low res mesh, it's also affecting the high res mesh because of our mesh deformer. And now if we play that, we've now fixed that issue. And you can see if we disable the correction, all it's doing is puffing that part out a little bit. So you could go through the whole animation and look for any more intersecting geometry and fix it like that if you need to. Or just go back and re-simulate with higher collision values. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you've got any more clothing simulation tips to add, just jot them down in the comments section below. And if you're interested in learning the full workflow for getting your Daz 3D characters into Cinema 4D for lighting and rendering in Redshift, take a look at our new character creation course over on cgshortcuts.com and I'll leave a link down below. You can also watch all of our tutorials and download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources on our website. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we can make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like so we know what to make next. Or just let us know what you need help with down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos just like this one. You can find loads of CG training, assets and resources on our website, cgshortcuts.com or become a member to access exclusive premium content. That's it for now. Here's a few more videos you might like.